Hello, everyone. We are now going to start with um, session two. Um, just a few housekeeping um, items. I will be speaking for uh, first, and then I will be also moderating um, this session where we will focus on GEM IWG and therefore all the participants and uh, who, who are presenting will speak about their own experience, their own memories of Nilufer and GEMIWG as to how we have been all influenced. So I will begin with that. Let me say that even under these very difficult circumstances, um, it is wonderful to see familiar faces, people that I have not kept in touch actually in the last years. And I was just uh, saying now to a colleague that Nilufer somehow manages to create community and uh, bring us all uh, together once again, even in her absence. So let me begin by saying that um, I first met Nilufer in the um, early 80s. I was a graduate student at the new school and Nilufer was just hired an incredibly beautiful, smart, extravagant, um, lipstick wearing lady that inspired, inspired all of us. The first uh, contact actually that I had with her was a very difficult one. I decided to take among uh, 15 other graduate students her course on mathematical methods for economists. She thought that we were well equipped to follow the very high level um, lectures that she was giving. And when we failed the first test, everybody failed. Um, I went to see her the, as a representative of the class and explained to her why we were failing. She was, of course, at the beginning furious with all of us. And within five minutes, she found the solution. We would gather in her apartment. She would cook osobuko and feed us all poor students. And we would discuss whether we can remedy the situation by her offering extra labs twice a week in her own good time um, so that she could bring us up to par and she would not have to reduce her own standards but help us very quickly catch up. That was Nilufer. Nilufer that would be unstoppable pretty much at obstacles that um, would be facing um, her for a very long time. And she gave us that confidence and that energy. She really spread it and shared it with everyone. So the second encounter with Nilufer was after I finished my PhD. I left academia for close to a decade, um, a little bit less than that. I finished my dissertation. I got a job in New York City. And there she is. Um, nagging me pretty much. So what are you going to do with your life now? You wrote a dissertation, it was on foreign exchange rates uh, determinants, to find a job. But now you have a job. And now it is your duty to come back to join me um, and to develop together among many other colleagues, because now you're not my student, but you're my colleague, um, develop uh, and contribute to this project. But I would say meekishly, I know nothing. I left gender and all that stuff. I remember, of course, the writings of Lourdes Beneria and Diane Elson and your contributions, but that's it. I mean, I, I, I cannot do it. Um, she insisted. She gave me a reading list and she kept checking on me. 
until we started actually discussing the current literature of the time. So whatever path I have followed in terms of gender and macroeconomics and women's empowerment, I owe singularly to Nilufer, who also had dragged me to one of the meetings that Lourdes Beneria and others were running back in the days when I was still in graduate school and re-energized me and I joined in. So her generosity and her openness and invitation that others will speak after me uh, about uh, having met Nilufer um, during the GEM at the beginning IWG uh, uh, sessions and seminars, um, I, I just wanted to begin by giving you a little bit of, of this uh, story. Now, it was about the year 2000 where um, 2000, I started working at 1990, in 1997. By the year 2000, I'm catching up a bit. So in the year 2000, I keep telling Nilufer um, that all of these wonderful ideas are so far removed from academia. We do not have this material in our courses. It is only here and there that you will find some references and some extremely progressive schools that would be incorporating material that um, at the very minimum, Sergi Floro and Lourdes and Diane and so on had produced. Um, these were the grand dam of, uh, of the time for me and for many of us. So I would tell her that this material actually is not uh, getting enough exposure, and she knew that as well. It's not enough to have 50 people around the world teaching and introducing these ideas to students to produce more research and so on. It was not sufficient. Um, and of course, she had started this wonderful work with Diane and with Karen. So here we are in 2000, 2001, and Nilufer, in every conference that she went, she would call me and report back as to who among the people that she met introduced this idea of the need of having intensive seminars for PhD holding economists or very advanced graduate students and researchers in order to first of all try to dismantle theory, neoclassical theory and macroeconomics as we know it by introducing these new ideas. And one day she comes back from one of those conferences and she says, I met Butch Montes, who's working at the Ford Foundation and he's willing to support us. You will hear from him as soon as I um, finish my comments. And I want to tell you that the GEM IWG project was the result of a person like Nilufer that had the energy and the vision but also had very clear a very clear agenda. The number one was the counteracting and resisting mainstream economics by including new knowledge and all of these wonderful ideas that you heard during the first session and many more actually. The second was the capacity development that she asked the very pertinent question, for what purpose? Okay, capacity development, so that what? What are we going to do with it? And the answer that she gave was awareness raising, policy intervention, and community building. And therefore, the courses were purposefully structured in that manner, meaning in a typical um, seminar we would have, uh, 25 to 30 participants as students attendees, 20 professors in quotation marks, those that were teaching and offering uh, the knowledge, accumulated knowledge that existed up to that point, five to six uh, keynote speakers. And what you had was this interaction among students, 
professors of universities, researchers, and those that had already established a very strong body of literature, speaking to each other and developing projects. The regional um, groups, as you know, this whole business lasted from 2003 to 2013. It was a decade long project. Uh, the thematic groups that developed out of that, whether it was poverty and gender, taxation, macroeconomics, employment policies, and what have you, produced work actually. She brought us together and together with, I can now see Indira Hirwe, um, we collaborated. I would have never known personally Indira except for her work. Emel Memis, with whom I also collaborated and had a fantastic time even in Mexico when we were working together for about six months back and forth. Um, we, I, I'm, I'm thinking of Valeria that spoke already. I'm thinking of Ipec. The many wonderful people that I have met, the work that we did and this sense of common purpose. A common purpose that I heard, let me see, because I wrote it someplace. Oh, yes, let's question, I, I'm paraphrasing, it was on ML, uh, ML's uh, PowerPoint. Let's question everything under the sun. And the other motto, and I want to leave you with that, the other motto, because people will speak about the regional groups uh, that uh, the, the speakers that follow, uh, after me, um, I want to leave you with one of Nilufer's greatest phrases that I think these miserable times that we live in now, both at the country level and also regionally in the Middle East and all of what is happening around us, if Nilufer could speak to us right now, she would say, don't get depressed, get organized. I leave you with that. And I want to say that um, until now, um, from what I have heard, it feels like the time for a stock taking meeting um, is maturing. We had one such occasion, if you recall, in Istanbul, I think it was in 2007. Um, and from the questions that have come up now and from the faces that I see, maybe this is something that we should be planning either in Rome as a side event for uh, us gemistas or at uh, some other place. I'm sure people will have many wonderful ideas, but it feels like the time has come for us to take stock and continue the excellent work that Nilufer inspired all of us to take. Without further ado, I will um, ask that the video that uh, Butch has prepared is uh, shown. And right after him, I want to invite Gül to share her thoughts, memories, whatever she wants to tell us about the way she met Nilufer and her experience in GEM IWG. I thank you all. I'm truly honored to speak at this event uh, celebrating the work and life of Nilufer Chatai. As I remember Nilufer, she would be extremely happy to see us all get together. First of all, because she, she herself, is the occasion. But most of all, because of the possibilities of actions, resistance, revolutions that are getting together today could unleash. She was truly an activist and an international revolutionary. But first, my disclaimer, I, I got involved in Nilfer's work and aims as part of my responsibilities to the Ford Foundation. So give credit where credit is due. I was doing my work, I was earning my pay. There was later an internal pushback 
in the foundation because to some the project looked like an academic scholarly activity, more appropriate for another unit in the foundation. But anybody who met Dilufer, who also could not avoid their sharp academic critiques and contributions, and hence the push pushback inside the foundation, could also not avoid coming away with and would never be able to disregard her fierce capabilities to bring people together and to mobilize them towards what you might call revolutionary risk-taking. I had to start the reality that this feminist network had been working and making advances for more than a decade on difficult soil. Nilofer was an irresistible inside force in this network. There had been some funding earlier from the Ford Foundation itself through Bernard Wasso, which resulted in special issues of world development beginning in November 1995. But the idea of just publishing academic critiques and innovations instead of building an international network, what Nilofer called knowledge network building, to upend economics itself, no less, which is a big enough target, but economic policy and development policy making, nurtured and beloved by Nidhofer's singularly generous and unabating welcoming practice and style, was compelling. As a 60s kid, I believed that having sharp critiques and new ideas was and could never be enough if the ambition is revolutionary change. There had to be warm bodies, a shared collective effort, organizational activity and practice, and personal behavior. Nilifer and I shared this view in a very deep way. Rania would have more details about the design and operation of the GEM IWG project. So Nilifer, I miss you. I wish we could still get together to party and to conspire together. This was from Butch Montes, our dear, dear friend and supporter. May I now ask Gül? Thank you, Rania. Um, well, first of all, thanks for this spot as a jurista. And I don't really know if I would be here and here meaning a senior economist working for Antat if it weren't for the network Nilifer had built with, you know, the network's brilliant, brilliant mentors who really have shaped my whole life. So it was uh, 2003, I think the first um, JAM IWG conference in Utah that you know, as a UMass Amherst PhD student, I applied, but I didn't get in. Three of my cohorts, Siraj, Kay, and uh, Sirisha got in. And, but I heard Nilfer was coming to a conference in New York. So I jumped on a bus, went to her conference, caught her in the break while she was smoking, because I was a smoker back then, and said, I really, really wanted to come to your workshop, because, you know, I read her articles in Nancy Fulbright's uh, gender and class um, uh, course. But she said, look, I would really like to take you, but you're, you know, I've already accepted three students from UMass Amherst, and you're Turkish, and I'm Turkish, and I had Turkish, you know, students in Utah, so I want different representation from different regions. So maybe you'll come next year. I was pretty heartbroken, but then the Chinese influenza hit um, a regional epidemic and uh, two of the Chinese students who got into the program couldn't come. So Nilifa said, okay, so you're in. I mean, little did I know then really how that's like being a gemista in that workshop would save my life. Um, after that, you know, the first thing probably I want to say about Nilifer is that she was the first 
professor, mentor ever that really was teaching everything with her heart, with this amazing passion, with such care. And, you know, in later years when we became more mentor and friends, and when she had become my friend, she would say, I take, I, I take my energy from people. Uh, and the kind of, I think, is just the two of us. So we really understood each other very well. Um, when I look at my career path, for example, the things that I've done so far with my life, I see nothing but, you know, my ability to walk on that career path has been completely a product of the Jam IW network. Uh, it was uh, the, you know, when I first got my tenor track job offer, it was actually Rania who called me. I got the job offer, but it was very low. And Rania said, bargain. Because <laughs> I, I was going to turn down the offer thinking they would never be able to make up to the market. But Rania said, bargain. Don't, you know, don't uh, um, wait. Just bargain. Most, if, if it were a man, he would get the offer. She, he, he would bargain. So just bargain. So that's what I've done. And then maybe a couple of years later, after maybe a year later after that post, so I got a fantastic tenure track job, which was also associated with Levy Institute. Uh, Rania and Nulufer and the team organized a uh, Jam IWG workshop to which back then UNIFAC were, uh, staff were also invited because I actually I was going to say the same thing that Rania said because UNIFAC was someone who would like to connect everyone from all different spaces of life for the same cause and he would all, she would always say don't get depressed get organized so in that network uh, the UNIFAC folk asked me to review a paper which then opened the world of UN for me and then it was later Butch Montes when I recognized wow this is really cool work can I maybe be more affiliated with the UN and then uh, and I was talking to Butch, who was another mentor from the network, and he uh, sent me a research position and said, look, this may be a bit low level or whatever, but it's a really nice research job. So there he was guiding me to get, you know, my kind of food into the uh, world of UN. And, and, you know, and here I am, and I'm now looking all these people really on the screen right now. They're not only, you know, people that I know from the Feminist Economics Network, but they're my, some of them are my best friends, my best mentors. And it was, it, it's, you know, JAM IWG uh, is not just a professional network, but it's like a secret society where you get support. I remember receiving an email from Diane Allison saying, do you need any reference letters for your tenor, tenor track file? <laughs> you know, it was like, you would feel very much supported and not alone because as a young feminist academic, academic back then, and I wouldn't really know where to turn or, you know, what path to walk on. And now I'm looking back and I'm thinking to myself, I, you know, if she were here or somewhere hearing, I was asking myself, what would I like to tell her? And I really would like to tell her that thank you for everything you have done in the fact. And in a way, really forgive me for not being able to give back to you or open to the network for, you know, the, uh, in return to what you have given to me. Um, I don't even want to imagine not having gone to the first, you know, Demista workshop, to be honest. That's why I'm here. And I'm really thankful for the spot. Um, and, I, and I think that's pretty much it for me. Thank you. Thank you, um, thank you very much, Gil, for, for your uh, comments. Um, I would like now to ask Indira and then uh, Leka to come forward. Indira. Okay, I can't say good morning, good evening, whatever it is. Uh, let me start by saying that I'm Indira Hirve. 
Uh, currently working as honorary professor of economics at Center for Development Alternatives, India. I joined GEMS seminar as an instructor in the early 2000 plus. And I continued till the program continued in Utah and then shifted to Levy Economics Institute. I participated also in GEM Asia program in Philippines and Bangkok. I met, though I had heard, seen her paper in the world development, I met Melukhar first time when I joined this vibrant and knowledgeable group, GEM IWG. My job in this group was to discuss time use surveys that would expand the conventional statistical paradigm to meet new data needs and to discuss the uses of this new data. Nilofar was the center of this dynamic gem, along with Rania, and also with Diane Elson, Maria Floro. And when I joined gem, I was a development economist working in India, not much focus on gender as such. But India had recently completed the pilot time use survey, which was asked, to, we were asked to design the survey. So I had designed the survey and implemented also, where I could see the importance of unpaid work and so on. Now, with that, I was also at the discussing at when escape. Some of the issues concerning the relationship between paid and unpaid work and uh, how to doubt conventional economics and so on. And that was my first exposure to gender form. Jane seminar was a pleasant surprise to me when I came to Utah. You know, for easily challenged the fundamentals of conventional macroeconomics and international economics and discussed designing new feminist economics. That was really, really exciting. Discussing the further dimensions of these challenges brilliantly were Rania, Diane, Valeria, Sergi, Korput, Dimitri, Montes, uh, Butch, Marzia, Karen, and several others. I was thrilled to see their commitment to gender equality and women's empowerment and to gendered macroeconomics. I called my first gen experience as an intellectual party in the last session. As I moved on, my sessions also improved and my learning also expanded. We never always moved around and talked passionately in and outside sessions. There was a lively conference at the end, of course, with dancing and singing. There were thematic groups and positive outcomes also. Gem IWG has been a great influence on the generation of economists. Gem showed how the real economy functions, the importance of development tools, by linking time use data with other data to understand critical socioeconomic concerns, including poverty, unemployment. <laughs> it identified the need for the need to look at economics, including public finance and gender, public finance with a gender lens, the need for assessing and monitoring macroeconomic policies in terms of their impact on unpaid work and the need to produce urgently quality time use data with rigorous concepts and methods and so on. Jim IWG has been one of the factors that influenced my work on one, so one minute. Have, one minute. You have one more minute. You have one more. Thank you. Okay. Rani and I edited the book. Then we edited two more books with Jim and IWG partners. And then recently we have done a book which is which examines uh, macroeconomic development 
sustaining macroeconomic development and why gender matters. This again done by Indian scholars living in India and outside. I have already told this book. Lastly, I would like to pay my heartfelt tribute to Dwindle Fair. I still imagine her moving around with enthusiasm that I had never seen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Indira. Um, may I now ask Leka? Thank you. Thank you, Rania. I'm with my own name, Trivandrum, so the, in the internet is unstable, so I'm not opening my cam. And thank you so much for inviting me to participate, you know, remembering Anilifer. She's passion for me. And uh, I felt home when I came over to University of Utah for a jam uh, workshop for the first time in 2003. Uh, I felt home in the sense I was working on a new project in India on gender budgeting. Uh, you know, it was like in the corridors of Ministry of Finance Research Institute. Applying a gender lens to fiscal policy was quite alien at that time. So I was having my own confusions and literally I was very sad within whether I am contributing enough to the policy making because it's a new project and it took some time to get recognition in India. So I was feeling very lonely. So I felt home when I met her, when I met you, Rania and our friends there. And the training that one month in the summer school in Utah that opened my eyes that, you know, it is plausible. And it was like a live bibliography for me because when I was doing the first, the pioneering project on gender budgeting in India, all my exposure was to the world development that special issue on gender and macroeconomics. And, you know, I read the works by Nilufer, by Gunsali, you know, Palmer, it, it, so it was like a live bibliography for me when I came over to Utah. And uh, Rania and Nilifer asked me to come and join the GEM in 2004 as instructor to take the course on fiscal policy and gender. So it was my privilege and honor to return to the summer school the very next year. Then the questions opened that it is not only gender budgeting, we need to apply a lot of crucial questions to the fiscal policy making. And the questions Nilifer asked me about the measurement issues, whether the time use will give you a right kind of statistics related to the workforce participation, and what is the fiscal policy space related to the employer of last resort policies. Then she asked me the question, what is it that gentle lens you can apply in the macro fiscal stance and the output gap literature which you are working into, the political economy questions. So she started asking a lot of questions. And then after my presentation in the conference, after the summer school, we had two days conference. Rania told me, you're not going to leave us. You're going to join the next month in Levy Economic Institute, where we are going to speak on the public policy and time use. You need to ask the question, the fiscal policy perspective by incorporating the time use, and you're going to come back. You're going to give us a paper. So I again, I returned to the GEM group, to the Levy Economic Institute, and presented the paper. You know, that opened another stream of literature. And I feel so happy that after that, the Levy Economic Institute built on that, the time poverty, which affects income poverty and what is a public policy space. So I could see the new avenues of the research opening, you know, from that, uh, you know, it, it's very nuanced. It started from a base of gender budgeting. Then I'm getting into more complicated questions. And later on, last I met, Nilifer, when I came for the gender and macroeconomic con conference in 2017, when my paper got accepted in the Levy conference. So she was there. By that time, I worked with a survey on gender budgeting with IMF. Janet Stotsky was also there. So she was asking me the question. And I, sh I still felt that loneliness within me. Am I contributing enough to the field? When my colleagues were contributing to deficit, intergovernmental fiscal transfers, finance commission, and working on gender. So this kind of self-doubt was within me, and I lived with that. But later on, when the door opened and the handholding given to me by the gender and macroeconomics and international group, that's, that's immense. Because otherwise, you know, even today, 
uh, if I speak about the bureaucrats and the public finance economists around me, even today, it's a struggle to give them what exactly is a gentle lens. We need to talk about it. So in a way, I'm lonely, but I felt home when I met the gentle and macroeconomics group. And recently, I published the Palgrave Macmillan book on you know, the fiscal policy on sustainable human development. And I owe that to the gender and macroeconomics group where, you know, I was in the right hands and, you know, everybody asked the right questions. So it was easy for me to ask the questions. And I now, you know, work with the youngsters and I'm trying to pass on the legacy of Nilufa and the jump to my youngsters. And I stop here and I can see Ali there. In the first conference, you know, Ali sat near me. When we were working on Gender and Macroeconomics Conference, Ali sat near me. And when, uh, you know, after my child, Adi was born, I was bedridden. I had a lot of issues. And it was my second life when Rania and Nilifa called me to Krakow for the Gender and Macroeconomic Conference. And I came with my child, Adi. And, you know, Nilifa in uh, Facebook, she asked me, I still remember the question, Adu asked me, in uh, you know, whether we children do a lot of homework do we need to pay tax so she came and wrote that statement my son asked her and uh, you know she was with me after that in my facebook and then she left a breath and i stop here thank you so much thank you thank you leka um, we now move to lucia and then to raquel thank you very much I am no, very no, happy no, no, no. to be here. Uh, I, I think that Nilofer is a very important part of our life. Uh, and in Latin America, we really, as Valeria already said, uh, we really uh, love her. And Nilofer enthusiasm together with her knowledge made us feel so important and basic agents to promote feminist economics around the world. When we discuss about inequality and huge economic problems of Latin America with our structuralist approach, she always said Turkey should be in Latin America. Uh, she always encouraged us to disseminate our research and findings. Nilo also was very happy with the activism that Latin Americans usually do. Uh, we had policy proposals based in our academic research. Uh, once the curses in, in Utah started uh, in the University of Utah, when they were taking place, Nilofer was the beating heart of the program, she was so close and interested in each one of us that made, made us very important. I recognize that there is a lot of uh, hidden domestic work uh, done by many scholars working together to put those courses, but Nilofer's joy and enthusiasm was one of the most most important parts of, our, of those courses. Uh, I participated in the second generation of the gender and macroeconomic program in Utah in the summer of 2004, uh, where we met uh, Latin Americans. The Rosalba was teacher, Corina, Marlene, uh, Marcia, Allison, and me were students. Uh, Maria Elena and Alma were part of the conference, and Valeria went uh, uh, next year to the same course. So we got together and um, organized GEM LAC, Gender and Economics and Macroeconomics in Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, when uh, we had a, a meeting plan, uh, and very many sessions, and we organized the first course in Latin American for feminist economics in Spanish. And uh, we were all together and very happy to be there. 
we as gem life uh, has disseminated feminist uh, economics in latin america as uh, already valeria said nilufer participated in our first scholars group uh, with our program and she was so cheerful and full of joy with us that she started her participation saying you all of you are my granddaughters uh, and we were so happy to have her with us so thank you Nilufer. i also think that she's around here hearing and and, and a huge a given us hugs and thank you Nilufer, for being there for us and you will always be one of our most important mothers and grandmothers in feminist economics thank you very much thanks thanks very much uh, lucia raquel are you with us yes yes i am around here and very 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 uh, excited to hear you all. Uh, well, let, let me let me start by thank you, Rania and, and, and colleagues for, for organizing this. I think it's not just to honor Nilufer's contribution, but also to acknowledge the incredible individual, but also collective impact that she has had on our lives. So, so first, again, thank you for this opportunity. Well, I am Raquel Coello. I, I currently work in, in UN Women in the regional office of Latin America and the Caribbean as an advisor of women's economic empowerment. But I've been um, working on feminist economics uh, since, since the early uh, 2000s. And, and I was really, really lucky to participate in the GEM IWG course in Utah in 2006. That year, the, the course on, in Latin America was being organized afterwards, so I was one of the little uh, Spanish-speaking uh, um, students there. But, um, but I, to me, uh, being in that course had been always like a dream. And being there was, I would say, it was a dream come true because I, I, I realized I was able to join two passions, you know, my gender uh, uh, studies and my uh, my knowledge on gender with my passion on macroeconomics, which was always like part of my uh, favorite uh, institutes in, in in professional life. However, I, I have to confess that I never imagined how this course was to mean such a turning point in my in my career. I would say first it it opened. It opened my mind to the vast field of work that was able to be produced in the area of gender and macroeconomics. You know, in, we had uh, teaching in, in trade, in monetary policy, in, in general equilibrium models. I remember Marcia teaching us <laughs> all those, all those uh, input output tables being also influenced by, by feminist uh, economic uh, thinking. And of course, in fiscal policy, I, I I entered Utah being a feminist economist, trying to move the needle on gender budgeting in in the region, in the LAC region, in the Latin American and the Caribbean region, and I think I left with the broader perspective of of how this could be framed into the fiscal policies and how to use it to transform macroeconomic thinking, and I think that was the first big idea that comes to my mind when I when I think of Nilufer. And, and as it was mentioned by many colleagues, the, the, the course was also an incredible space for networking with feminist economists. And many of you are here. And, and we in the region, Valeria, Lucia already mentioned it. I think we were able, and we still gather together to continue pushing for a common agenda to influence economic policies from a feminist perspective, particularly in LAC, but also beyond LAC, because I think LAC has also uh, had an impact on, in worldwide in, 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 the, in the thinking. And I can see this influence in, in many practical discussions we have had with governments in intergovernmental spaces. Uh, Valeria already mentioned the Buenos Aires commitment, which is an agreement between all the governments of the region on the CARE Society. 
And I'm very happy to say it includes a specific paragraphs on, on promoting contracyclical policies, uh, enlarging fiscal pay, space for, for uh, having a, a great and an adequately financing of the expansion of care systems. And this is just to name a few of, of, of some of the influence we've been able to push forward. And, and in all of those discussions, GEM, IWG, as well as Nilufer, it's, it's present. And uh, I think, and that's that's how I also I want to remember Nilufer, the also was uh, the course was able to be in trickle down in regions, but also in countries. And, and we organized a specific course in Ecuador where you, Rania, were already also he, also there. Many of the gem lack uh, feminist economists here were also there. And Nilufer came, came with her son. And that was the really single moment where I I had the, the so happy uh, opportunity to, to enjoy Nilufer, not only in academic terms, but also I would say in personal moments and to see how Nilufer was. She was extremely committed to general, to be very generous in sharing all her endless knowledge with also being such an enjoyable person, sharing really like pure human sense. And, and to be with her was like being with a rock star of the feminist economy. I don't know, like a Patti Smith or Tina Turner of the feminist economist, but she was at the same time really close and really friend and always showing her that human touch. So just to say, to finalize, I'm, I'm really, really grateful uh, of life to put Nilufer in my way. As I always be forever grateful to Nilufer for her contribution on my, on giving me a real meaning to what I do in my professional um, and personal life. So. Thank you, Nilufi, wherever you are, you will always be with us. Thank you. Thank you, Raquel. Um, I, I need to share something, two things with you. I'm abusing my privilege here. First, I'm not keeping very good time because it, I am taken really by the comments of everybody and it is so difficult to interrupt, it is not as if somebody is giving an academic paper, so you tell them, okay, now time is up. Um, so I am abusing the time limits big time. So I apologize that we will have less time for q and A Q &A at the end. And the second thing is that I wanted to mention is uh, what I said earlier about the need for stock taking, because for every person that is presenting, as I am familiar to some degree with their work, um, there are some incredible advances that have taken place. Raquel, to single her out, uh, sorry for that, Raquel, has recently co-authored a fantastic uh, piece that we should all be aware of on the integrated care systems and the care economy in Latin America, where there are five countries that are doing it already. So I won't take up time to explain more, but may I please ask, everyone who is presenting, um, both in session one, this session, and the one that will follow, to share with us um, one or two links, not the whole bibliography, of recent work that they have done and they feel is important. And we will post that also on our website. One to two links of papers. That would be really fantastic in sharing and maybe uh, moving towards the idea of stock taking um, of the gemistas. Um, okay, thank you very much. Now I will I would like to ask Eva and then Anna to join us. Eva. Hello, oh, I greet Is everybody from Poland, and I'm so moved and thrilled to see so many faces. And uh, yes, I just, I'm so sad that this is the occasion, but I will also say thank you very much, Nili, for that I met her. Uh, I met her, in fact, uh, for the first time in New York, sometime uh, by the end of 90s. I don't remember the date, uh, uh, but she was standing in the front of DC1 building 
It was a sunny afternoon on, in the fall and she was pregnant, very happy, full of energy. She was talking to Diane and I just bumped on her. I knew Diane and Diane said, oh, by the way, Nilifor, if you want to see this is Eva, she is a consultant on Eastern Europe working for World Economic Survey. And maybe this is the person you are looking for. And Nilifor said, oh yes, maybe she is. I said, what is the issue? She said, look, we have a wonderful project. And she was just uh, having some hints that she will have some funding from the Ford Foundation. And she said, look, what we need, we need somebody from, from Eastern Europe, because this is the, the region which is not so well researched and known from this gender perspective. I told her, look, I, I don't know anything about gender. You know, I'm working more on a traditional analysis of what happened to, to, to the production, to GDP, to all this, uh, you know, normal uh, mainstream analysis. And she said, look, but this is uh, something you should know and you should get into that. So this was really an eye opener because uh, as a follow up, I prepare a short paper uh, looking at what happened to the labor market and women's employment, you know, participation rates, but when they started to work, what happened to the wages in different sectors. And it was really an eye opener because I discovered that women's participation rate declined rapidly. And then they were taking lower paid jobs and the <clears throat> prices, the, the wages in sectors which will be for uh, uh, the transition process feminized like the banking sector uh, jumped up if the uh, uh, services became market oriented and then women lost their jobs in this sector. So they moved to uh, education and health, public services, which were underpaid. If you looked at the rapid changes, what has happened to the, uh, to the Eastern European countries in my country, Poland as well. So first of all, nearly for drew my attention that something is not properly analyzed and working in Eastern Europe in transition process, when everybody was completely overwhelmed by the enthusiasm of building market economy and democracy. This was a big task and nobody really cared, none in the government, non, uh, even the uh, organ, uh, non-governmental organization. They were really very much stuck on this market building. And then the second thing, everybody thought that in Eastern Europe, women have full rights and there's no issue of inequalities and discrimination, especially when Poland joined the, the, the European Union in 2004. So then they thought everything is taken for. So the really great merit of uh, Nili Fu was that she said, no, this is not true. Look what's happening. So she not only drew the attention to this issue of myself, but also some colleagues, which Anna will certainly will complete the picture, but also she provided the uh, methods of analysis and the framework, because you know this the transition process was a perfect case to say how this biases Diane was speaking at the opening session. I worked in these countries. Commodification bias was clear, you know, it was a full redistribution, massive redistribution of assets and entitlements, and women lost in this game. In fact, it went to men, and unpaid work increased tremendously during that time, and paid employment declined in Eastern Europe and in Poland as well. So uh, the main... If mm -hmm. I'm sorry, one more minute. Yeah, I will be cutting short. Yeah, yeah, that I will sum, sum up. Uh, okay, so this was the giving us the possibilities. Uh, we continued with, in Le at Levy, you know, when we met in 2009, Rania, and really it was a absolutely great GEM global meeting. There was a decision to create GEM Europe group because of these reasons that we missed analysis and action. And I think uh, 2011 in Istanbul, 2012 and 13 in Krak 12 and 13 in Krakow, Anna will say more 
about this because we did it together with her and with EPEC in Istanbul. Uh, so I must say that as a result, I will see three lines of results stock in terms of stock taking just in half a minute, right? Uh, first in research, we started to uh, have this perspective in research in Anna's work, but Zofia Wapnieska work at the University of Jagiellonian University, the Motorhofer Kochner in Szczecin, and many former gymistas from Krakow. Secondly, there was teaching. You know, we opened the eco feminist economics course on postgraduate studies in the Polish Academy of Science, when I had the privilege to teach there together with Zofia Wapnieska in the past. So many of the papers which we just heard here are the curriculum readings for the students. And the third, which I will not have time to explore, is the policy change. This is where I'm very much involved. And this is the large organization called the Congress of Women. And I'm sure Nili Paul will be happy that policy is to be changed. And our latest um, uh, issue is that we have a, a shadow government in which uh, we present the full uh, fledged program for the new government. I will show this is uh, published already. And uh, as you know, after eight, eight years of very traditional nationalistic government, we have now a chance to have a real democratic government. Uh, in this government, I'm the Minister of Finance and I prepared the whole program for the Minister of Finance, how it should be uh, changed. Uh, and guess what, of course, gender budgeting is there on the, on the one of the items uh, to be done, including also the gender analysis. I will stop here because there's no more time, but maybe there will be a chance to, in Rome, to continue the stock chain uh, taking, which I found, Rania, it's a brilliant idea. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Eva. We move on to Anna. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Um, Very Great. Uh, so yeah, I, I will I will share more of my personal experiences. So I first uh, became a part of Gymnistas in 2005, uh, the, the, the year that uh, we were there with Valeria, Valeria and with Naoko, who just wrote to me. So hi, Naoko. Um, and uh, this was a seminar that we participated that um, finished with a conference. So a very, I would say, let, later it became a traditional way how the uh, how the GEM IWG um, run the seminars. But there was one huge difference between um, twenty years ago, ten years ago, and now. So all the readings that we had. They were paper readings. There was all in paper. And by the end of the seminar, Nilofer asked us if we would like to have this paper with us. And we said, yes. Well, I, I was the one saying, yes, I would love to have it. And uh, a month later, a huge box shows up at the you know uh, front door at my home with all the paperwork that we have uh, that we went through during those two weeks, like the huge box. And I have all those papers with me. Why am I, am I saying that? Because one of those papers was by Diane and Nilfer uh, that was mentioned already today, the social content of macroeconomic policies that um, we managed to translate into Polish uh, uh, two years later. So in 2007, we got a, we received a grant as the feminist think tank to translate important articles in feminist theory. This is important. It was not about feminist economics, but it was uh, about feminist theory. And we translated the piece by Nilfer and Diane. And um, that was, I, I believe that was the beginning of the impact in at least in our country. Um, and I will tell you why, because I do have an evidence that it is a true, a true impact. 
What happens later is what Eva has already mentioned. Uh, we start talking and then the GEM Europe uh, starts running seminars. The first one in Istanbul and then the following two in Krakow. Um, the ones in Krakow uh, happen year to year, but they were they had a different uh, they had different um, agenda. I would say the first one was uh, again a gem IWG with twenty three participants from sixteen countries, I believe, uh, with many instructors coming from different countries. We all got together. Uh, it ended with a great conference. Um, that focused on crisis and gender gender impact of a crisis. Uh, it was it was 2012. We we all still suffered. In 2013, it was a different uh, meeting. It was the meeting of the participants of previous meetings. So we brought back nine participants from our previous seminars. Then we had 11 instructors, all of them participating in, in GEM conferences, seminars. And we had two, year, two days um, meeting, discussing papers, discussing ideas. And I know at least one was published by Feminist Economics uh, later, several years later. Um, we had those two wonderful events, but uh, the thing that I remember the most is one night in 2012, that was the ending of our seminar. It was still before the conference, but we had a huge party in the hill in Tregorzawe, in the terrace of the building where the classes were organized. The music was on. Nilofer was responsible for playing the music. We were singing, we were dancing. And by the way, there was another summer school um, taking place in the same venue, totally not linked to us. They heard the music and they came over. They partied with us. And this year I met a professor who worked uh, in this other school saying, oh, and do you remember? There was this great party with all of you dancing, and we just felt a part of this whole event. So I believe this was something that is also that also needs to be mentioned. This was all Nilufer. She was serious when it came to things that needed to be treated seriously, but then she would be involved in this bright side of life. And I would like to finish with one thing that, you know, because I was I was trying to look at the impact that Nilfer has made uh, in this region. Uh, the way I did is that I went online to Google Scholar, sorry for that, but this is the easiest way to do it. And I put feminist economics in Polish saying how much was written, I, I was trying to, to find out how much was written in the topic uh, before the GEM Europe happened in Poland, so up to 2012. And I managed to find less than 20, 19. For last 10 years, from nine, 2013 to 2023, we have reached 50. And then I put Nilufer's name in the engine. And the paper that is cite cited mostly in those Polish uh, language papers is social content of macroeconomic policies. So thank you very much. Your mic is off. You thank you. Really thank you very much. Thanks. That was. Uh... That was really terrific. Uh, I'd like to invite Imran to join us and then Maureen. Imran? Uh, it's, it's a great a great honor for me to say a few uh, kind of to say a few words here 
uh, kind of here today because Nelif is really one of well, one of the people that 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 kind of really shaped uh, the work that I do quite quite uh, fundamentally. So I first came across her work in 1996. Uh, and that was shortly after the special issue of world development uh, uh, came out. Um, I then sort of really got to know her quite well um, in the I, um, uh, uh, kind of in the I, uh, 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 WG Gem world. Um, I was um, a participant in that in the early two thousands, and then um, moved from participating to instruct to to being an instructor, because with Nilifa, once you were in something, there was just no way for you to leave. And, and uh, I, I kind of engaged uh, in, that, in that process for some time. Um, I really have four, four, four reflections on those uh, kind of IWG gem days that I thought would be worth sharing. So the first thing that I, I learned from her in in those years was kind of how it was possible to see hope. Um, kind of, I think we living in a time when it's quite hard to to kind of imagine a fairer, uh, a, 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 a kind of peaceful world. But uh, she she taught us all in those years. Um, how it is possible to see hope um, and how it is uh, possible to think about changing the world. The second thing about those IWG gem uh, 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 days was her, her, what she taught us about how you take on and try to change a set of, of dominant ideas that are that are that that are wrong um and and all of the investments of her time and in all of the capacity building that she did to to build us all um i think it was really about kind of how you take on and challenge a set of ideas that you're wanting to change the third reflection is really on kind of how you go about uh, 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 building a movement. Um, I don't think uh, Nilifa was 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 kind of interested in making small changes. She was interested in 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 kind of really building a movement for change. And I think kind of IWG Gem and the fact that we all here kind of today. Um, kind of is a reflection of the the the, the kind of unbelievable uh, contribution she made to to kind of uh, 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 building a movement for change. The final reflection, and so dancing is not something that comes can kind of easily to me, uh, and. Nilifa is one of the people that uh, kind of really made me feel a lot more, a lot more, com um, a lot more comfortable uh, 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 about having having fun. We shared a passion for 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 kind of reggae music, and spoke a lot about uh, about. Bob uh, Bob Marley, um, and I kind of recall the fantastic parties and dancing and the relaxed atmosphere that she created uh, for for kind of for all of us to succeed. So, sort of lastly, just a personal reflection. I I I can honestly say that those those kind of IWG gem days really shaped uh, um, my work um, my work trajectory and I think I'd be 
um, I'd be speaking for, for kind of everyone who was involved in in those the, those days that without uh, uh, without her tutoring, without her her nudging, with without her her uh, 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 Comradely uh, guidance. Um, I don't think kind of all of the successes that the uh, 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 feminist economics world has achieved would have happened. Uh, she's a real uh, a major contributor to the area, um, and 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 kind of I'm really grateful for all uh, for all that she's done. Uh, so wherever you might be, Nilipa, um, kind of, I think we'll always be uh, kind of extremely grateful for everything you've done. Uh, thanks a lot. I'll I'll stop there because I think my time's up. Rania, you need to unmute yourself, sorry. Thank you, thank you. Um, is Maureen with us? Maureen? Uh, okay, maybe we'll come back. I'll check whether Maureen was able to join us. Um, we will now have Ipek and Yelda. Ipek Jim. Yes, hi. Thank you, Rania. Um, and uh, as Yalda is speaking, I will also text Maureen to see uh, if she can join us. Okay, so I first met Nilifer at a heterodox economics conference hosted by the University of Utah uh, Economics Department in 2006. And, uh, and from 2006 onwards, we uh, first of all, let me say that it was sort of love at first sight. And I liked what Rakia said, Tina Turner of Feminist Economics. Yes, she was. Um, it was our first encounter, although it was in the context of a conference, was not at a session, conference session, but it was at Nidifer's house at this for the conference participants and the graduate students. I just couldn't believe that anybody would be so courageous without any catering service or anything, just to host this huge party and just invite <laughs> everyone over. Um, and, uh, and, and I was in the early stages of my career at an assistant professor at the time. And, uh, and of course I knew about Nilifer, but I was starstruck as so many of us said, uh, when I saw her, but from the, the first moment onwards, the very equal relationship way of relating that she had, uh, it was incredible. And when I was thinking about what to say in this session, looking at the, the key words of knowledge networking and capacity building, what came to my mind was how Nilifer, Nilifer's impact on me as a mentor, as a friend, as a colleague, um, was also capacity building through confidence building. Just the way that she was interested in what we all had to say uh, and what we all were working on, um, so that that equal relationship building was so crucial um, in uh, in her mentorship. Um, so in the in respect of time, what I want to say is um, two characteristics of the gender and macroeconomics international working group project for me. One of them was that it was an I think for a number of reasons, and I I want to explain them. I, I think it was a very effective, and in fact, it was a genius method, methodology for capacity building. And the second thing was that it was also a very caring and collective project, not promoting one's own individual work, which is um, the sort of, you know, what defines the landscape of academia and scholarship, but really caring for creating the space for more feminist economics, for more alternative economics and caring to make the world a better uh, place, building upon 
the 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 skills um that uh one has as nurture and as an intellectual so um with respect to the first one i said i i think gem iwg was a very effective in fact a genius method for capacity um building and I think that has to do with um, several axes, uh, I think about five or six axes um, around which it was organized. So first of all, each module was taught by an expert who is actively engaged in research in whatever the theme or the topic of that module was, rather than the common case of courses like this, like in feminist economics or gender and economics, being taught by one instructor or two or three instructors covering a whole range of topics. Um, and so the fact that each module was taught by an expert who's actively engaged in research and policy um, around that topic made it really lively and, uh, uh, and very inspiring. Um, therefore, around the table, you would have many instructors, many experts simultaneously with multiple participants and students um, that had a brilliant outcome of uh, networking and also equal relationship building. Um, and uh, another axis was that GEM IWG workshops entailed conversations not amongst feminist economists, people engaged in feminist economics, but it entailed also conversations across heterodox economics and feminist economics, building bridges and uh, promoting cross-fertilization. Uh, and in fact, I think when I was first involved in a GEM, um, invited to a GEM uh, workshop in Istanbul in 2007, I think at the time I, I identified more as a heterodox economist. And I, I, for a long time, I had identified as a feminist activist. Uh, but it was really through the GEM workshop that I brought, uh, I, I uh, was able to combine these two hats of being engaged in heterodox economics and being a, a, a feminist. Um, another um, very important uh, element, access that uh, the organization of GEM IWG had for me was that it had uh, the, the, yes. Thank you. End of time, okay. Uh, just let me wrap up. The composition of instructors, participants, and contact content had a perfect global content, content a perfect balance of global north and global south. south. Uh, but maybe uh, also it was important that the initiative was in a way global south-led. Uh, and finally, so many of you have uh, mentioned the access of uh, entailing work and fun uh, together. What a holistic way towards knowledge creation exchange, just as life itself is, and what a genius way to network. And finally, it was two weeks long, uh, which meant, brings me to my final point that uh, GEM IWG was also a very caring and collective in initiative, intensive in volunteer work, um, and very much, uh, you know, against the nature of the individualistic landscape of academia, uh, it was an altruistic undertaking um, uh, that entailed uh, a lot of um, investment, time investment and energy investment. Uh, and when Diane was talking about a lot of um, unfinished papers of Nilifer, uh, I think it was uh, in some part uh, due to the fact that she put so much time into this altruistic effort of knowledge networking and capacity building uh, from which so many of us have benefited. Uh, and we are here today. I mean, these are resonating. And before I finish, in addition to Nilifer, Rania, your efforts, uh, in um, taking the the flag from Nilifer in the, the 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 following years, and also running with the Gem IWG initiative and helping us to uh, with the the Gem network um, in uh, in the European region. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we move to the final speaker, Yelda. And we will only have, with your permission, after um, Yelda speaks, five minutes for any comments or interventions, because I have been really undisciplined with time. Yelda. Thank you, Rania. I think time has flowed so fast, and I still 
want to stay you know if you say we stay i will stay for till the night or day whatever so i will um, uh, start telling uh, how miraculous uh, my first meeting with Nidifar and the Jam Network was in, you know, like many of my friends here that changed the course of my life. Uh, because I was, when I first met Nidifar, I was at the turning uh, point when I was having thoughts about how to change its, you know, direction uh, towards a different personal realization and meaning. I was in, uh, my training economics was in very mainstream in uh, one of the best universities in Turkey. There were hardly few courses about alternative critical approaches. I worked in a bank as a senior economist uh, for over 10 years. And I you know, at that time I was questioning that my experience as a bank economist felt to have uh, matured. The first time I saw Nilufar's name, was in a mail from IPEC uh, in 2009. She forwarded a message from her to spread the you know fifth cycle of Gen IWG network, uh, knowledge networking program. But uh, I had neither heard this net network nor uh, her name to my ignorance. Uh, it was the last minute call, but something I cannot at the time ignited an excitement toward this program. Maybe it was the tone uh, maybe it was just how it should be. Although it was a last minute, I rushed to apply for the closed deadlines. I was admitted. That year's topic was gender and global economic crisis, which became one of my research tracks since then. The instructor list was fabulous. You know, many of our here today. The content was, as Ipek said, and many, many, many of my uh, colleagues and friends said, it was so mind opening. I was amazed by learning how all the dimensions uh, of economics could be gendered and using either formal or alternative method methodologies, macroeconomics could be geared towards, you know, uh, something different for the sustainability of, you know, human being or meeting the needs of people. And women's unpaid role was valued, which was very, very, uh, you know, new idea to me. So revolutionary and inspiring it was for a novice like me. Um, not only the content, but the instructors, their sophistication, you know, uh, the expertise of the participants and the uh, instructors. Uh, beyond all, uh, Ipek said she was the, uh, Sorry, what did you, Tina Turner of economics, but at that time, Indifar was like an economics magician in the room, like female Gandalf, so to speak. So it was so startling that made that workshop a dream story. Soon after the workshop, I found a position in the university and since then in Turkey, uh, I'm in the university teaching economics and feminist uh, economics, uh, you know, content. Since then, Indifar remained in my life. Um, so, um, her legacy, her approach to gendered macroeconomy, uh, all the feminist scholarship that I have, uh, that I met in gem workshops and conferences, laid the foundations of my future studies after that. Um, so, she sparked many ideas in different dimensions of the macroeconomy about gender budgeting and financing for gender equality. Her approach, for example, became, which was uh, like a motto, going beyond national context and searching for global solutions is something that I keep in mind. And we should have, you know, I, something I say to myself that we should have claims for broader global economic structures going beyond the national uh, jurisdictions. She took gender equality as a basic human right and this premise was another guidance in my life uh, when I participated in human rights related projects in municipalities in Turkey. Um, so uh, in all these, uh, I'm grateful to the GEM network. It extended my scientific knowledge, introduced me to countless number uh, of researchers from different countries, backgrounds. Some of them were my friends and others uh, have become my uh, friends uh, after that. 
So uh, Jam Turkey, um, I participated in Jam Turkey's seminar and conference, Krakow conference, and uh, so um, another turning yeah, point. Yeah, you have one more minute. I, I have to finish. Okay. Uh, was the uh, our beloved Nilufar initiated the project uh, of uh, preparing gender and economics training course for UN women. And she called on a team of best friends of mine, all three of them, Jim Stas, are here, Emel Ütek Özge. So she loved her country and it was a priority for, uh, for her to encourage feminist economists in Turkey. And last not the least, I cannot cite many other collaborations with Emel Özge in, uh, in academic research. So finishing. Nilüfer loved Istanbul and she, it was very special for her. She loved the city, Meyhane, its taverns, and the beautiful Bosphorus. And she shared this with us every time she was here. I will miss her beautiful dining tables, intense intellectual and joyful daily conversations, her friendship, big laughter, and most importantly, I will miss uh, her big heart in which she had a place for everyone and everything she loved. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yelda. And thank you very much, everybody, for coming together, celebrating Nilufer. It is very clear that um, we wanted to have more time, but even for this um, little, um, time that we share together, I have to say that on, on my end, I now recognize how badly it was needed in accompanying the so sudden departure of our sister with your thoughts, which I will keep together with Nilufer, really in my heart and in my mind. Thank you very much for this session. We will now take five minutes uh, for any comments, any uh, other um, last minute contributions, and we will break for 10 minutes and then we will come back. Um, any comments? Let me see your hands, if you can raise your hand in case somebody wants to. I think we are all ready for a break. So um, I will see you in 10 minutes. And in the meantime, um, I, I want to um, ask for that famous song, if we are ready to play it and we can all listen to it during our break before we reconvene. And whether we dance to it, whether we pray to it, whether we speak to Nilufer through it, um, we will see you again in back in 10 minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs>